former Republican Congressman Mark Meadows, a member of the House Oversight Committee. Sir, thank you very much uh, for being here tonight. Good to have you. Um, Great to be with you, Martha. So thank you. So you may have heard uh, some of that I intro, and basically Democrats are saying that that was a desperate move, that it's all about process in terms of what Republicans are complaining about and not about substance. What do you say? Well, I think we're complaining about both. It's the substance of what is happening behind closed doors and the fact that your viewers can't judge for themselves. I mean, I've never seen anything quite like this. And, and Jim Jordan was right. It's reached a boiling point. I think that uh, we're giving Adam Schiff the opportunity to open the doors, let the cameras come in, let the American people judge for themselves. I mean, what is there to hide, Martha? I mean, if, if we're talking about transparency, let's let all the testimony uh, be out there. Listen, here's what, what they're afraid of. They're afraid that the leaks that they've been putting out over the last two weeks will start to have the rest of the story that we're hearing behind closed doors and that all of a sudden their impeachment narrative will start to fall apart. So we believe that uh, it, it's time that we have an open and fair process, fair to the president and fair to the American people. So we had Congressman Ratcliffe on the show last night and he um, basically said that he questioned Mr. Taylor and asked him, you know, whether or not there was any quid pro quo, which we talk about a lot with regard to this story, whether or not there was anything withheld. Now, when you look at Taylor's testimony from yesterday, and this is one of the, you know, sort of more prominent pieces of it that, that has gotten a lot of attention, he says, Ambassador Sondland said everything depended on such an announcement, including security assistance, and that he wanted President Zelensky in a public box to make a public statement about ordering such investigations. Now, what, what is there, what more to the story was there when you were in that room that you want people to understand? Well, we, we can't really talk about specifics in there. That's one of the reasons why we want an open and transparent uh, uh, process. But I can say the, this two things. That narrative that we heard from uh, Bill Taylor uh, yesterday, or Ambassador Taylor, uh, that narrative was not consistent with other testimony we heard from two other witnesses, at least two other witnesses. And it was not consistent with other cross-examination done by uh, uh, John Ratcliffe and others. And so when when we start to see those inconsistencies, we think that that's the important thing that for a full picture on an impeachment process that not only uh, the American people, but every member of Congress who's going to be asked to vote for this one way or another should have that benefit. All right. So tonight there is a request for Adam Schiff. It's coming from Jim Jordan and Representative McCall and Devin Nunes. You may be part of that letter as well uh, to Representative right. uh, Adam Schiff saying that they want an interview with the whistleblower and any individuals that the whistleblower relied on to assemble that complaint. Uh, where's that going to go? Well, I, I think it'll go nowhere with Adam Schiff because he wants to make sure that this whistleblower's allegations, many of which, by the way, uh, I, I don't know that this has been reported, but many of the allegations that the whistleblower has, has put forth uh, has been directly contradicted by even the Democrat star witnesses. And so we want to hear from them. It's in America, you should be able to face your, uh, your accuser. And I can tell you that, that when you find this out, when we start to look at the whistleblower and hear from them, we will see that they didn't have any firsthand knowledge. We want to talk to those people that have firsthand knowledge. All right. You know, I think a lot of people would look at the process and say that, that a number of the people that have been brought into that room, and I think you're right, I think Americans want to be able to see these transcripts and hear this process, because after all, we're talking about something enormously serious here, about the potential right. to impeach the President of the United States 12 months from a national election. Uh, we, this has never happened to someone who is in their first term and headed towards election, um, and that, that's clearly unprecedented. But I want to know if these polls concern you. The new poll today from Quinnipiac shows 55 percent of those polled approve of the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Um, I should also point out this other poll from New York Times Siena that we showed last night, which is, you know, at this point, it's, it's a little bit of an outlier, but I think it's interesting because it's a battleground state poll, and it shows 53 percent oppose impeachment and removal of the president. But, you know, do you, do you think you're losing the public argument on this? Because the president called for folks to get a lot tougher on your side. 
Yeah, well, I think when you only hear from one side, Martha, uh, certainly the polls will move that way because all they're hearing is one side of the story. Then all of a sudden, I, I trust the American people. I know you trust the American people. When they look at the facts, they, they say, well, they did this with the whole Russia collusion conspiracy, and there wasn't support for that. That's why they're having to do a different tactic here. Here's how bad it is, Martha. I've been in the room for almost 70 hours now of, of testimony. I can't go in to review the depositions that I was a part of, that I listened to in real time, without a yeah, Democrat <laughs> staffer looking at it and, and looking over my I shoulder. Mean, it's you just are on the committee. Uh, you know, I, do you think that was a, a good stunt or a bad stunt today to, to force their way in? Because, you know, people remember Trey Gowdy on the Benghazi situation saying, <clears throat> sorry, everybody, the only folks who get in this room are those who are actually on the committee. Well, the difference on the Benghazi committee was the Benghazi committee was designed to create a report that was coming to Congress. This is actually different. Every member is going to have to vote on it. And when you start to look at this, uh, this is very different. When, when you look at, at what we have, there's not a single classified thing that's been discussed. There's no reason why the cameras can't be there. Benghazi had a lot of classified, a lot of uh, privileged information that we didn't want to share with our enemies. This is a totally different scenario. All right. Uh, any big headline from the Mrs. Co from Ms. Cooper's testimony today before I let you go? No big headlines. I will say some of the facts that she gave today contradicted the witness from yesterday, and so we're going to have to go back and reconcile that, and so you'll see that in the coming contradicted days. Contradicted in what way? Well, I think they contradicted some of uh, who she said was involved in making certain decisions. Was it directly at odds with what we heard from the ambassador yesterday? Okay. Congressman Mark Meadows, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight, thank sir. Thank you. Take care.